Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be reviewing the How Not To Die cookbook. So this is a vegan plant-based recipe guide. Its purpose is to prevent and reverse disease. So the author is by Michael Dr. Greger. For those of you who don't know, um, Dr. Greger is a plant-based doctor. He runs a website called nutritionfacts.org where him and his team research and look at scientific papers and then turn those into bite-sized, easy to understand videos. They're usually about five minutes long and usually conclude how you can take that information and apply it to your life. He also is the author of the How Not To Die book, which is this huge book which goes through all the leading causes of death, so from heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease, um, cancer, and talks about what foods you can um, eliminate and what foods you should include to help protect and prevent yourself from those diseases. So it's an excellent res resource. Um, if you don't want to um, work your way through this, However, this book does have a summary at the beginning of the recipe book and all the foods that Dr. Gregor recommends in his book from his research are included in these recipes, um, which is really useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a full review of the book. I'm going to talk about the presentation and layout of the book, what ingredients are included, and the preparations that are needed um, before you can make the recipes. And then I'll talk about my experience making the recipes and what I think of the book overall, and kind of give you my recommendation and what considerations you would need to make before buying this book. So overall, I really liked the layout and the presentation of the book. So the positives, um, the contents page, it goes in order of, um, the sections are split into food groups. Um, each recipe has a massive picture of what the recipe looks like, which can help you decide what you want to make and really draws you into the book. Um, each recipe has a narrative. Um, it tells you how many servings it's for, the difficulty. The recipes are well written and very easy to follow. They give you enough detail to know what it is you should be doing. Um, my only criticism here would be that I would prefer some like numbered bullet points just to help me follow the instructions. Um, but apart from that, it's well um, laid out. The only other information that's missing is maybe how long the recipe takes to make. Sometimes that is a factor when picking out a recipe. Um, even though that will vary between person to person, it can give an idea on, on how long it might take. Um, but apart from that, yeah, it's very, very well laid out. The My favourite part of the layout is these little black boxes, which give you different facts um, throughout the book. So it's really um, links in with the purpose where he's trying to prevent and reverse disease. So he's giving nutritional facts, um, why certain foods are good for your health, um, reminders of other ways that you can include things like flax seeds into your diet. Um, it reminds you to eat fruit, that fruit is the best snack. Yeah, so that's really nice educational and fun element to the book. So overall, yes, very much like the, um, the presentation and the layout. So let's talk about the ingredients. So there may be a few cupboard items that you will need to purchase to start making recipes from this book. Um, on the plus side, um, I could tell from reading the How Not To Die book that these are very well thought out. They're in quality ingredients that a lot of them will have positive impacts on your health. Um, some of them you may need to go to a health food shop or a shop online to buy, such as a qual good quality miso paste, uh, nutritional yeast, and things like that. Um, on the plus side, he's really made good use of his ingredients. You can tell from flicking through the book that as well as at the same time as making a lot of variety in different types of dishes throughout the book, he has reused these cupboard items a lot. So you will find miso paste, nutritional yeast in a lot of his recipes. So if you do buy a new ingredient that you've not tried before and you like it, the chances are that you will get real good use of the ingredient um, as, you go, as you try and go through the recipe book. Um, he also has a ingredients list at the back, um, which is really helpful, uh, and also a meal plan as well. So if you're not sure where to start, 
you could have a go at following his um, getting his shopping list out and following his meal plan. So yeah, I really like the um, ingredients in the in the recipes, and they worked really well in the recipes as well. So there is also a preparations element of the book. So this recipe book is one of those books where some of the recipes include recipes from other parts of the book and these recipes are all in one chapter called preparation um, and he calls these smaller recipes at the, in the preparation chapter um, flavour makers so the my the kind of the downside is that you do have to if you want to make the recipes in their entirety and follow the instructions completely then most of the recipes will require you to um, make some of these recipes at the beginning and the preparation stage um, the plus side is that he does give tips on how to save time uh, how to store these and make them in bulk so for example some of those are making your own broth so again, you, he gives you tips on how you can store that. He um, does his own unami sauce, which is really nice. I really like that. Um, and he recommended pouring them in ice cubes, which I did, and keeping them in the freezer. Um, so now when I need them, I can just get one or two out and put it in the frying pan with my dish, and that adds really great flavour. So by doing this, you're building really good healthy habits. So instead of using store-bought sources that can come with ingredients that you may not want to include in your diet, this book kind of teaches you how you can make your own versions of those ingredients um, and include them in, in other meals, not just in the recipes that are in this book. So my recommendation, if you do pick up this book, would be to try the recipes in the preparation chapter first, practice making those in bulk, and practice using those with meals that you already make. So if you already um, use hot sauce or harissa sauce or, or um, herb blends with some of your other recipes, make your own um, and start using those with recipes that you're familiar with. The other alternative is to substitute these. So you can go straight into the normal recipes within the book um, and then instead of having this big task of preparing first, you can use store-bought alternatives. So you're still... Um, making a step to improving your health by using healthier recipes um, but you're compromising with your with your time and your your kind of current experience so you can uh, get store-bought um, uh, almond milk and um, harissa sauce all the things that i've just mentioned um, and use those within the recipes in this book so you don't have to make use of the preparation book um, chapter um, but i found it very useful and it gave me some really great tips on how i can still get that good flavour um, but without relying on kind of uh, unhealthy or unhealthier um, condiments um, and flavourings that we're used to using in cooking. So now let's talk about the recipes. So I really like the variety of recipes in the book and I like how it teaches you a new way of cooking. So it teaches you how um, to not use oil, not use salt, how to get flavours, how to have a healthier way of preparing your food. Um, I really enjoyed that. Despite already um, trying to learn that already, I still learned a lot from this book. Um, one of my, one of the things when I looked at the recipes that concerned me was the amount of ingredients in each recipe. But when I started making the recipes, I did find that actually, despite the ingredient list, the the process is still quite simple. So my favorite example is the bean burger, where you you simply put all the ingredients in a food processor blend it all up, mould it into patties and then put them in the oven and then they're done and they were really nice, they were delicious, I really like those. Um, a few reviewers on Amazon said they were they made some of the burgers and thought they were dry. Um, I made two of them and didn't find that at all and I think you can adapt the recipe for your own preferences if you want to add more of the wet ingredients um, to stop that or cook them for a little bit less. Um, but I really um, enjoyed the simplicity uh, and the filling. It, they were just really satisfying. Uh, other recipes I made were the shepherd's pie. Found it interesting that there is no, there's no white potatoes in the book at all. Um, and I understand Dr. Gregor's um, reason for that. And he, I think he says that you know why would you use white potato when you can use sweet potato that is more nutritious and gives the same kind of texture and can be used in the same dishes. Um, his shepherd's pie, he actually uses a cauliflower mash, um, which I tried, and that was re I really liked that as well. Um, 
Not a big fan of buying cauliflower, I usually have sweet potato in, so when I made the shepherd's pie, I made it with sweet potato, and that worked really well. Um, a few things with some of the recipes were, because he's going for the, like, the most healthiest way to cook them, some of the vegetables are very crunchy, um, so when I'm making that for friends and family, that isn't something that they're used to, They and it isn't always that pleasant for some people to, to crunch down on vegetables so some of the recipes when I remade them I cooked them for a lot longer and um, still using the same methods of steaming them and um, but just that they were softer and, and more palatable for other people. I enjoyed the um, used pumpkin puree for the first time in a smoothie that was really nice and um, what else so I really enjoyed a lot of the preparation ingredients and I've been using those in some other recipes. So, um, like I mentioned, the unami sauce I've been using, I've been using miso paste a lot more in recipes as um, to boost flavor. So yeah, I um, really enjoyed the recipes. So the only things that I think people need to take into account is if you have only just started your health journey, then, and you're not used to um, reduce sweetness, reduce salt, your taste buds are very much geared to wanting more of the kind of processed flavours, you might not like some of these recipes straight away. Um, I, I'm, I know somebody, for example, who tried 50% less salt and sugar ketchup and they hated it. Um, and another friend who didn't like those naked bars, they weren't sweet enough. And it's all to do with what fl what your taste buds are used to. So if you're used to a lot of processed food and you go straight into this recipe book, um, you might not like the recipes as much as somebody who has, um, who is more accustomed to this way of eating. So that's just kind of one consideration. And another is just the preparation um, that you would need to make some of the recipes, which I've discussed already. Um, but like I said, you can substitute um, ingredients and recipes and you can really, what I, what I love about this book and why I would definitely recommend it is that it is, it is a tool and it, it teaches you, it doesn't just give you a recipe, it, it educates you and gives you um, skills that you can then apply to other recipes and just cook healthier in general. So I would really recommend the book for those reasons and thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in another video.